chapter number 133. Psalms 133. <clears throat> Psalms 133. Say amen when you get there. The Bible says in Psalms chapter number 133, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in, say it with me, unity. Amen. Now let's say it like Scripture says it. There's an exclamation point on the end of there, all right? I want y'all to holler it out at me. Just simply because y'all seem like you're half asleep. All right, here we go. How good, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in... Yes. Amen, all right? It is like the precious ointment upon the head and ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, and went down to the... Uh, to the skirts of his garment as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that uh, descended upon the mountain of Zion, mountains of Zion for there the Lord commanded the blessing even life forevermore. Amen. I want to preach tonight just a few minutes on that, uh, the idea and the thought and the blessings of unity. Amen. Uh, unity in our church. Uh, I know that I know that a lot of times uh, some churches that I've seen, some churches that I've been to, uh, big, big churches, small churches, every church, it don't matter, non-denominational, Baptist, Catholic, whatever the case may be, some of them have issues, if you will, with unity. Amen. Dwelling together in unity. Amen. And uh, I believe our church uh, does a very good job at unity, amen, at working together. Uh, but here's what, I, here's what I would like to see for our church is for our church to be a church that, that fellowships together, that works together, that spends time together, amen, outside of these four walls, amen. Outside of these four walls, and when we leave this back door, I don't want us to take our unity off and hang it on the hanger and then pick it up next Sunday when we come back. Amen? I, I've been a part of churches before that, man, uh, we uh, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, I, I not, and it, did, it wasn't church things, but we just spent time together. Amen. It was a it was a church family. It was a it was a it was a uh, it was a congregation of friends that spent time together that uh, that that poured their hearts into each other, poured time into each other, enjoyed fellowship with each other. Amen. Uh, enjoyed spending that quality time with each other. Amen. Uh, it's important. It's important. Why? Because right here in this in this small passage of scripture, in this small chap in this small chapter, three verses, uh, it, it, uh, David tells us how important and how 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 good it is for brethren to work together, to be unified together. Uh, he talks about it being a precious ointment uh, upon the head. Amen. And many times throughout Scripture, that ointment, uh, the uh, shepherds would use an ointment for what? To heal. For healing. When we dwell together, it is a good opportunity. It's a good thing uh, uh, for, for each other to find healing from each other. Amen? Uh, when, I, when we're going through things, we need to go through things together. Amen? Uh, when we're going through issues, maybe someone uh, is drifting away from the Lord. Maybe someone's not as close as they once was. Maybe they're in a place where they're uh, where they just uh, they need some encouragement in their life. It would be good for us as a church family, Amen, as a church body, to get behind that person and help them and help heal them, Amen. Uh, not to just well, well, they hadn't been here in a few weeks. I don't know what's going on with so and so. I ain't talked to them. No, we need to get together in unity and help one another and push one another hey because we're a family amen and and, and we're we're a body of believers and the and the body is only as strong as its members amen and so the, if the eyeball is messed up then uh, the whole body is affected amen if the foot uh, has something wrong with it the whole body is affected and we need to work together in unity to see each other uh, healed amen 
amen, to help heal one another, to help guide one another, to help uh, each other with our pain and our suffering and our frustrations and where, we're, uh, where <clears throat> we feel like we need to get that help. <clears throat> A lot of times we just, we just kind of stay in our own little bubble. I'm guilty of it. Amen. Why are you laughing? Hush. Did y'all hear that giggle? What was that about? She gi- she giggling at me. Amen. Well, we know what Miss Kelly thinks. Amen. She agrees. Get some cough drops. I'm starting to choke again. It's good for us to to dwell together and get outside of our little box that we put ourselves in, the little box that we put our family members in, our children, and start working together and spending time with each other. Amen? Because I'm going to be honest with you. There's probably some people, Not I'm not seeing anybody in here tonight, but there's probably some people that sit over here that have never spoken to some people that sit over here. Amen? That, that don't know what somebody over here is going through. Amen? Because when we come in, we just, we find our seat, our seat. How, you know how us Baptists are with our seat. Miss Gail said, hey, man. Miss Gail, she got a nameplate on the end of hers down there. It says Gail Helms. She just lets Brother Jim sit with her every now and then. We got our seat. We got our place. We rush in. Get the kids in there. Sit down, and we, we, go, we, we go through the service, and that's it. Out the back door, and we're gone. The Magnolia House. Amen. <laughs> Or we're going to get lunch and that's it. But today, listen to me, I saw something that just blessed my heart today. As we went to lunch and we had four tables stuck together. Amen. We had 20 something people at the restaurant and we were all fellowshipping. And everybody that was there was somebody that we, everybody that was in church together this morning. Amen. Unity. Unity. And, and all it takes is just a phone call or a text message. Hey, hadn't seen you in a while. I really care about you. We miss you. Hope you're doing okay. And when that takes place, there's a healing process there. Amen? There's something that goes on in a person when they see how much you care about them. Are y'all with me? Have y'all ever been in a place where you've been down? And just as somebody will call or text message or come by and see you, and then it just picks your spirits up. I want us to be that church. A church that goes together. A church that sticks together. A church that stays together. When we worship together, that's great. That's awesome. But let me tell you, it's, let me tell y'all something. It's unbelievable how good the worship is together when you know what you're, each other's going through. Amen. It's like the, it's you know how different it is when you go out to eat with friends, right? You're trying to be on your best behavior, and you don't you you try, you try not to talk with your mouth full and all that stuff. But then Thanksgiving with your family. You're grabbing stuff with your bare hands out of the uh, macaroni plate. 
and you're eating, you're, you're, you're reaching over with a fork off your brother-in-law's pie and you just get, let me try some of that. They try to do that to me, but I, I'll stab somebody over a piece of pie. But you know what I'm saying? Let me get a, let me get a little bit of gravy right there. You got your biscuit that you've bit off of. Let me try some of that gravy. And you're throwing it in. And you, your cup's empty, so you just grab their cup and start drinking out of it. And you just, everybody's just eating. I watched today, we were sitting there at the table. Man, the kids were just eating cheese dip, like just scooping it, licking it, and scooping it again. Just get after it. Amen. It works. I'm for it. I wasn't eating out of it. But they can have at it. But y'all know what I'm saying? Y'all know the difference? It's the same thing with worship. You come in here and you don't know anybody and you feel isolated. You're not as, you're not as quick to open up in worship. You're not as quick to go to the altar because you're kind of a little bit embarrassed. You don't really know what anybody's thinking. <clears throat> but when everybody gets to know each other and they get to care about each other and they get to love each other, not only do you go to the altar, but then somebody comes with you. And you start to cry and you start to worship and you start to raise your hands. That, that, that sister over here that has been praying with you about that issue that she knows that you're getting victory over, then she starts to worship a little bit because now she's got something and she's got some involvement in your life just like you do. And then all of a sudden y'all start worshiping together. And all of a sudden you're on the altar, you're praying together and you're dwelling together in unity. And the Bible says that it's good Amen? And it's pleasant. And the Bible says that there's healing that takes place there. <clears throat> A precious ointment that upon the head that ran down to the beard, even Aaron's beard. <clears throat> In verse number three, as the dew, as the dew, there's precipitation, there's a reviving there. There's nutrients that gets put into your life when you dwell together in unity. Amen. There's a pouring out. Amen? You find things that take place in your life that just, there's a replenishing when you dwell together in unity. Those few weeks that I was able to come over here and work some, It did me so good to ride over to Eddie's store and just hang out with more saved people. I'd come, I'd rush over here, get my little work done, and I'd ride over to Eddie's store and hang out until they closed. You know what that did for me? Just to be able to, <clears throat> just to be able to hang out with more saved people, people that are going through some of the things that I'm going through, People that are having to go about their day to day lives as a saved person, as a Christian, you're trying to live your. And man, it's just, it does me good to laugh and to cut up and to talk about, to talk about things and not have to listen to worldly things. It does, it does something, something for you. When you get to fellowship with brethren, other saved people. I love to hang out with some of my preacher buddies, preacher friends. But here's what I long for. It's, you know, I've had a few people ask me, well, now that you're full-time pastor, what's your goal? I want a church that is unified. I want a church that spends quality time together. Amen. Me and, me and Kelly on the way to lunch today made a list of all the young adult families right now. And how many were there? If they're all here, 24. 
20 ate at Fox. So we had 20, listen to me, had 20 eaten together at Fox's, had 20 eaten together at, at the Mexican restaurant. I mean, that's 40 people from our church that spent time together today outside of this building. Y'all know how big that is? There's some churches today that didn't have 40 people sitting in them. Amen? And we just fellowshiped. We spent time together. Shared burdens. Shared laughs. We have, listen to me, we have to be that church. If we're going to make it, if we're going to make it, we have to be that church that is unified and serving together. Amen? We have to. If we want to see other families come in here, I want them to walk in here and say, man, they just, they're like a family. They're, they just, they just, they're, they're just like a family. And we had, I had someone make that comment to me. My my boss when he came and he, he and his wife, they said we love y'all's church because it's just like a just like a family. What what more could you ask for? Because when it comes time to share problems and to share heartaches and to share burdens, who do you share them with? Your family. Amen. I want us to be that church. And the Bible says here, for there the Lord commanded, listen to me, y'all know how big that is? The Bible says that the Lord commanded the blessing, even life. He commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. You may tell you why Grace Baptist Church is still here today. Because 22 years ago, it was started in unity. And then it was added to by unity. And it was added on to even more by unity. Then it came time to build a building. And what happened? You unified and you built a building together. And you started running buses together in unity. And you started picking up kids together in unity, teaching kids, uh, preaching to kids, preaching the gospel in unity. That's why it's still here today. Because if you wouldn't have unified 22 years ago, do you think you, do you think Grace would have made it through the things it's been through without being unified? There's no chance. There's no chance. We need to keep going. Keep doing it. Keep plugging. But here's the thing. You say, well, if we're so good at it, then why are you preaching this? Let me tell you why. Because this morning we had, I think there were four families that don't come regularly. Four. That, that are not here now and they're normally, they don't come all the time. Number one, that's a huge blessing. And I'm not bragging on me, but two of those came from one phone call that I made. And they were here, and you know what we need to do? We need to, we need to in, engage, and we need to uh, implement them in our activities. Amen? Because if we don't, they'll be gone. Because if you don't think another church wouldn't love to have them, and maybe even the wrong church. Man, you say there's a wrong church? Yeah. We got to stay on, on them, <laughs> calling them. Nug this morning, boy, I got a blessing. I about, I about picked that little joker up and threw him through that door right there. He came up to me after the service, and he was squalling. Couldn't even talk. He just hugged me. He just wrapped me up. 
crying. And he barely got out the words. He said, that was good. And he just sat down. After church, he just sat there. He said, man, that was good. Sonny, this morning, sitting back there just squalling. We have to, we can't, we can't just stay the small family. We're growing. Man, we're growing. And I want them to be a part of it. Real bad. Real bad. Because the potential that was sitting over here this morning, from here all the way to the back, Josh and Jessica, Christopher and Lindsay, they're all here this morning. The potential there is un unbelievable. Scott and Cameron, look at Scott sitting in the sound booth working the screens right now. It's a big deal. That's a real big deal. Amen? I don't, I'm not going to make small of it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not going to make light of it. But we got to keep on. And me and Brother Ed, we can't do it alone. These ladies that were here this morning, these, these wives to these men, listen, they're, they're, number one, their husbands, they don't want me calling them. I don't need to be calling them. Ladies, Y'all need to be making some phone calls this week. Say, I don't have their number. Kelly does. Go see my wife. Amen. We were so glad you were at church with us. Please come back again. Try to be here on Wednesday if you can. Bring your kids. Miss Rachel's the nursery director now. She was voluntold this morning. Y'all ever heard of the, the, the term voluntold? Man, when, you, when I worked in law enforcement, I learned that was one of the first words I learned was voluntold. Yeah. Coon dog was upstairs, but I got jumped by a mob of kids. <laughs> he was up there in one of the suits, Elmer. He was Elmer. And if there's anybody, if there's anybody that's Elmer in this church, it's Coon Dog. Amen. Amen. Y'all know how big that is? Let me just remind you, okay? And I'm not trying to go backwards, but think back about six months ago. Think back this time last year when my son was the only little boy in this church. When after church, he would come up here and roll a Hot Wheels car off the steps because he didn't have anybody to play with. And this morning, y'all get on our Facebook page when you go home. This morning, there was, I, th I think I counted, I don't know, 18-something kids, 20-something kids that were taking pictures back there in front of the Christmas trees. 30 upstairs. Y'all hearing me? 30 kids upstairs. 30. And I remember coming in here some nights. I remember being here on some Sunday mornings when we didn't have but just a handful. When the choir would get up to sing, the congregation would empty out. And I'm not trying to go backwards. We're going forwards. I'm not trying to bring that up, but I just don't want us to forget about it. But how do we keep it? Unity. Unifying. Working together. Amen. Our work day a few weeks ago, our work day a few weeks ago, I don't know, we had a crew here. We had a crew. Y'all was have a moment of silence for the pear tree. We were talking today at lunch. Poor Sonny, that's it for him. He is the man that cut down the pear tree. <laughs> he laughs about it. 
He, he, Todd, brother Todd said he called him and asked him, was asking about something. He said, Hey, this is Sonny. You know who I am? Oh, I'm the guy that cut down the pear tree. He said, Oh, I know who you are now. Yeah. Forevermore. He's that guy. But we had a big crowd that day. People that stayed here and worked. Miss Kimberly vacuumed this church for like 14 straight hours. I'm not exaggerating. She was here that morning, started vacuuming, and did not stop until nighttime. Every time I would go around the corner, she'd be vacuuming. I'm like, is there really that much carpet? Or do they just keep tracking junk through here? I, I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. I'm happy. I'm excited. I've talked to some friends that say that this COVID thing has just destroyed their church. And it did hurt ours. We lost some folks. But we can get them back. But look what we've gained. Man, look what happened this morning. Just the people. The altar call. The altars were full. Full of people that aren't even members here. Y'all know how big that is. Amen. Let's just keep it up. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. God, I thank you for your many blessings on us. Thank you for being so good to us. Lord, I pray, God, that you would continue to send people, and I pray, God, that we would do our part and unify and, and, and involve people in your work <clears throat> and in your ministry here at Grace Baptist Church. We sure do love you. We thank you. We praise you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, if you've